this is the problem prop cantilever w l e i and we have constructed the um, force diagram okay represented everything as forces and we got d is equal to so this is ra ha ma rb and let this be w so automatically i got the value as 4 minus 3 equal to 1 i got the value of d as s 1 now in the second st uh, second step i'm designing on the primary structure i'm deciding on cantilever okay so i'm plotting ds plus 1 that is two cantilevers okay and in the first one i'm going to load the external load external load is this i loaded that and the second one i'm loading the redundant which is rb then I'll be plotting the deflected shape of the original structure or the structure that is given the substructures and uh, by doing that I got the displacement as YB1, YB2 and the original structure which is 0 so I got my compatibility equation as YB1 plus YB2 equal to 0. Now the next part is the calculation of the displacement. So for that we are going to use a unit load method. So unit load method. Okay. So YB1 and YB2. I'm going to do it parallelly. So for YB1 and YB2, we know that when we are using a unit load method, there are capital M figures and small m figures. What used to be the capital M figure? Do you remember? The capital M figure is the given beams itself. So these are the capital M figures. Now we want the small M figures. So what should be the small M figures? We need to apply unit load where we want the displacement. So here we want the displacement that is a vertical deflection at the point B. So we need to apply a unit load here. So our uh, unit load figure will be something like this. So I'll be applying a unit load. And what about the second case? Second case also, we want the deflection here itself. So I am applying a unit load. Okay, and I will recommend you to apply the unit load in the same direction. Even though here the displacement is downward, here the displacement is upward, use the same convention. So use the, uh, for the unit load figures, use the same direction because if you do that, the expression calculation for filling the table is going to be easy. I will show you how. Now we are going to prepare the table. So the table will uh, the S, E, L, O, M and M. That's our regular table. Okay. So we are going to do that. Fine. So in this problem, how many segments will be needed? How many point load locations? Okay, here one, two, so one segment. Here also one, two, one segment. So both we require just one segment. So one segment is enough for the both cases. So I'm going with the segment one. And this is for the Y1 calculation. And here I will use this space to calculate Y2. Okay. So let's do it. So both cases, I require just one segment. So here also one segment, one segment, one segment, one segment. So everywhere I just require one segment. So EI is constant. I'm writing those EI are constant. Limit. The length of the beam is L so 0 to L just one segment what about the origin whenever we are dealing with cantilever it's preferably the free end so origin is B now I want to get the expression for bending moment so we uh, you should remember when we are trying unit load method we'll be taking the common section for the capital M and small m figure so I'm taking a common section and the distance x should be from the origin origin is B so this is x so what about the expression for moment here okay here the moment will be w times x into x by 2 that is w x square by 2 and it is a hogging moment so i'm going to get minus w x square by 2 from the capital m figure what about small m figure small m figure i'm going to get 1 times x and what about a sagging or hogging 1 times x hogging which means minus x now in here also i'm taking a segment 
So what about the expressions? So if I'm taking the section here, RB times what will be the distance X? Distance X should be from the origin. Origin is here. So this is distance X. So what will I get? RB times X sagging or hogging. This shape is sagging shape. So RB X and what about here? 1 times X and it's going to be hogging. So just like what we have considered here, these two are same. So here also it's going to be minus X. Now I can directly calculate the value of Y1 and Y2. So what is Y1? Integral M M DX by EI. So I will be using this set. So what are the values? Limit 0 to L capital M times small m. So what I'm going to get is W X cube by 2. W X cube by 2 DX by EI. When I do this, this integral x cube is x raised to 4 by 4 so it's going to be w x raised to 4 by 4 by 2 that is I'm going to get w l raised to 4 by 8 ei okay and what about the direction the assumed direction of the unit load was downward so this is downward now I'm calculating y2 so what will be the value of y2 again integral m m dx by ei so what about here m times m r b x times minus x so minus r b x square minus r b x square dx by e i so x square when i integrate it's become x cube by here also limit is 0 to l x cube by 3 so what i'm going to get is minus r b l cube by 3 e i what about the direction assume direction is downward so this should be downward negative of downward it means that it is upward okay let it be though now we are going to use the compatibility equation to solve this so i am going to write y okay this will be y b1 and y b2 okay, we named it like that though so now we are going to use substitute these values in that equation so i'm going to get w l raised to 4 by a t i then this is minus minus r b l cube by 3 e i equal to 0 and when we solve this, we take to this to the right hand side, I am going to get RB equal to 3WL by 8EI. So we got the value of the redundant. So what we have is this and uh, we have a reaction here. The value we got it as RB that is 3WL by 8. Accidentally I wrote EI in the last statement. It should be 3WL by 8. EI, EI get cancelled out. And it is subjected to the load W. So the reactions what I am going to have at this support is 1 as vertical, horizontal and say a moment. Okay. MA, HA and RA. Now I just need to use the equations of equilibrium to get the final solution. So first I am trying sigma fx equal to 0. So what will I get? I need to have a sign convention. I am considering all the forces to the right as positive. There is one force HA, no other forces, which means HA equal to 0 in the horizontal direction. Now I am considering the second one, say sigma Fy equal to 0. So I am considering the positive direction as upward. So Ra is acting upward, Rb is acting upward. No other, uh, then there is this W acting downward, this length is L, so minus WL equal to 0, which implies RA equal to WL, it goes to the other side, RB goes to the other side, which is 3WL by 8, and I am going to get the value of RA as, so 5WL by 8, okay, so that's the value of RA. So I have the value of HA, RA, now the only thing remains is MA, so I am trying for that, I am writing the expression sigma MA equal to 0 and taking moment with respect to this point. So this I think in the last slide we took it as clockwise, any direction I can assume it is perfectly fine. So I am assuming it as anti-clockwise in this case, so I am going to get the moment here minus MA because it is in the anti-clockwise direction and with respect to this point I am going to have this RB effect. So RB times L, it is anti-clockwise. So minus RB times L. Then the effect of W, it is 
clockwise so plus w l times l by 2 equal to 0 which implies m a is equal to i'm taking m a to the other side so w l square by 2 minus 3 w l by 8 times l so what i'm going to get is this is 8 this is 2 so it's going to be if i'm taking 8 as the lcm so denominator is going to be 8 this is 4 w l square minus 3 w l square which is basically w l square by 8 okay and uh, while doing this i assumed it as anti clockwise so its direction is anti clockwise rb i assumed upward so this is an upward force ra i have assumed upward so it is an upward force so that's how we analyze a propped cantilever subjected to udl using consistent deformation method Thank you.